This is Delhi. Please stand by for the next broadcast. This is All India Radio. Mahatma Gandhi inspired millions of people world over to take the path of non-violence and civil disobedience. He has shown a way to this extremely materialistic, acquisitive, narrow-minded and selfish world. Gandhi may not be amongst us, but he manifests himself through many individuals in our society. One such individual is Adolfo Perez Esquivel. Adolfo devoted many years of his life to the cause of human rights in Argentina and the whole of Latin America. He is an untiring and consistent champion of the principle of non-violence in the struggle for social and political liberty. He was awarded the Nobel Prize for Peace in the year 1980. Today, in the national program of features, we bring to you a feature titled Power of Non-Violence based on the adaptation of Adolfo's work titled Some Reflections on Gandhi and Non-Violence. It has been extracted from the book Contemporary Perspective on Peace and Non-Violence. The views expressed by the author are personal. Once there lived a boy in the small town of Porbandar on the west coast of India. He was timid and feared to step in darkness, even in his own house. Surprised to learn that as a child and long before he was given the Sobrike Mahatma, the boy named Mohandas Garamchan Gandhi was no different from many his age. In fact, even the keenest of eyes may not have noticed how special the boy, born on 2nd October 1869, would grow up to be. But the metamorphosis for Gandhi did happen. Gandhi later grew to be the most revered global figure of peace and ahimsa. In a world marred by racism, colonialism and expansionist ambitions, Gandhiji propagated the idea of non-violence as a means to counter oppression. His radical ideas of dissent in an age of violence and bigotry left a profound impact on many world leaders who actively drew from the Gandhian model of Ahimsa and Satyagraha. Gandhi's life was a source of inspiration for many people across the globe and they became his true followers just like Martin Luther King Jr. Well, I think I would have to somewhat interpret Gandhi. He was emphasizing, rather trying to refute an all too prevalent fallacy. And that is that the persons who use the method of nonviolence are actually the weak persons, persons who don't have the weapons of violence, persons who are afraid. But I think that is what Gandhi was attempting to refute. Now, in that instance, I would agree with Gandhi that if the only alternative to violence, uh, uh, to fear, uh, is violence and vice versa, then I would say fight. But it isn't the only alternative. And that is the one point that Gandhi was trying to bring out. But I still believe that nonviolence is the strongest approach. I think it uh, should apply in every situation in the world where individuals seek to break loose from the bondage of colonialism or from some totalitarian regime. and his holiness the dalai lama recent decades more and more appreciation about non violence everywhere so gandhi already no longer with us but his spirit very much alive on this planet so i'm also just tiny follower of Mahatma Gandhi's example. We all, same human being, we all have the potential of negative emotion, negative action, positive emotion, positive actions. So use our human intelligence, minimize this negative emotion, and deliberately try to promote this positive emotion. through that way 
we individual also becoming much happier person mental level happy peace then non violent action automatically come within our own mind full of fear full of anger full of hatred and a spirit of revenge impossible to achieve real non violence so non violence is the reflection of inner peace and the former president of the united states barack obama when reverend dr martin luther king jr was protesting racial segregation in the united states he said that his guiding light was mahatma gandhi when dr king came to india he said that being here in gandhi's land reaffirmed his conviction that in the struggle for justice and human dignity the most potent weapon of all is nonviolent resistance and the list goes on adolfo perez esquivel an important reference for many generations on the defense of human rights and the promotion of a full and dignified life and the recipient of the nobel peace prize 1980 was no different from these world leaders he too adopted gandhiji's philosophy and practice we will now take you through the life and events of adolfo and how gandhiji was relevant in adolfo's struggle for injustice in his native country in his own words the testimony of the life of mahatma gandhi illuminates humanity he discovered the path of non-violence in the old sacred books and decided to take on the challenges of the struggle for the liberation of his people and his country india at that moment many young people were impressed by this man who decided to strip himself of all worldly goods in order to be free and to dedicate his life for the greater good I would like to share a small story of my life when I was young how Gandhi ji touched my life My father was a fisherman who as many other immigrants did immigrate to Argentina He had to work and survive in an unknown environment He knew of ships and fishes, of nets and winds, of stillness and tempests. But everything that was from the past. He had to survive in poverty. I had to start working when I was 10 years old, selling newspapers on the streets, trams and street corners. Morning paper, morning star. Paper mister. I used to do it joyfully. and it was fun to have my little profit at that time in the plaza de mayo there were places where used books were sold and i liked visiting them and sometimes buying a book to read with my friends in parque lezama there was a bookseller i never knew his name and he never knew mine either we communicated using don and the pibe a kid One day this man said to me Pibe I have two books for you one of them is a gift for you and the other one you can pay me as you can These books were The Story of My Experiments with Truth The Autobiography of Mahatma Gandhi and the other one The Seven Story Mountain by Thomas Merton a Trappist monk of the Abbey of Our Lady of Gethsemane I'd read news about Gandhi and his struggle in India. Even in ordinary affairs, we know that people do not know who rules or why and how he rules, and yet they know that there is a power that certainly rules. The bookseller Don told me who Gandhi was and his non-violent struggle for the liberation of India. under british rule he told me 
that Gandhi had to suffer imprisonment and abuse for defending his people. I was impressed by the history and life of this Hindu. I read Gandhi's book several times. It was like discovering a new dimension between spirituality, social and political action. The thing that impressed me the most was his humility. A man who could have used his ability as a lawyer to live comfortably chose to refuse that and chose to live only with the most basic necessities and nothing more. This man not only struggled against British domination in India, he also was aware of the need for a deeper change of heart and conscience of his people. Sense perceptions can be and often are false and deceptive, however real they may appear to us. Where there is realization outside the senses, it is infallible. It is proved not by extraneous evidence, but in the transformed conduct and character of those who have felt the real presence of God within. I do dimly perceive that whilst everything around me is ever changing, ever dying, there is underlying all that change, a living power that is changeless, that holds all together, that creates, dissolves and recreates. That informing power or spirit is God. He worked for unity between Hindus and Muslims. But non-violence was beyond a simple tactic against the empire. It was a way of life for Gandhi and according to him, one must practice non-violence in all relationships. The mystique of prayer and spirituality, his commitment to the people and his courage and decision touched me throughout my life and struggle in Latin America. The second book, The Seven-Story Mountain by Thomas Merton, helped me to understand the meaning of spirituality and oration. He was a monk who extensively studied non-violence and relationships with other forms of spirituality. Other people whom I knew personally and gave me their friendship were Lanza del Vasto, Jean and Hildegard Gos Gos Maya, also apostles of non-violence who preached the power of the gospel of non-violence. I was inspired by them all, but I was closer to Lanza del Vasto. Born into an aristocratic family from southern Italy, Lanza del Vasto was not only driven by an immense intellectual appetite, but also by an intense passion for life. He frequented the writers of the time and travelled abroad, alone and on foot, to Italy, Germany and Greece. But soon, the desire to look the world in the eye led him to more distant horizons. In India, which he traversed from Ceylon to the Himalayas, the philosopher-poet lived as a vagabond and a pilgrim. At the center of this journey was a significant encounter with Gandhi who gave him a new name, Shanti Das, Servant of Peace. Un souvenir de grande blancheur. Il était vêtu de blanc. The war was coming on to us. And why does it come? What does make it come on every civilization? What is it that generates war? A war that in fact Nobody wants. Well, the only person who had a solution and answer to my questions was Gandhi. It was in the 30s when I went to meet him. It is difficult to talk about somebody we love. I have of him all in white memory 
a memory of great whiteness. He was dressed in white. He was dressed in simplicity too. He was lively in his movements. His speech was very clear and he was articulate. He was precise in his thoughts in order to make it understandable for the humble. He was affable and cheerful as soon as you came close to him. When you went away and you looked at him from a distance, you saw him grave, thoughtful, but not sad. He was quite alert, although he was 70 when I met him. He walked rapidly. He did a daily walk and we followed him. Only two or three people had this privilege. He sat in his hut, he spinned or wrote letters. Before leaving, I went to ask for his permission. It is at that moment he gave me my name, Shantidas, meaning the servant of peace. Lanza del Vasto was one of Gandhi's convinced disciples from the West who learned the true meaning of non-violence through his personal acquaintance with Gandhi and literally experienced it in day-to-day -day life and action during his stay with him. The influence of Gandhi on Lanza del Vasto was so profound that it changed the course of life of this philosopher, thinker, poet and artist and everything in his life thereafter centered on the principles of Gandhi. Back in France, Lanza published Return to the Source in 1943, which told the story of his 18 months journey in India and made him famous. He pursued the idea of founding a Christian-inspired Gandhian Order of the West open to every human of goodwill. In 1948, he founded the Community of the Ark, to which I was a member. I met Lanza del Vasto in Buenos Aires when he came to give a series of lectures on non-violence. We established a close relationship and began to participate together in a group of the Friends of the Ark. It was an extension of the European community where the Gandhian message had rung true. For several years, I was part of the group of Friends of the Ark in Argentina. During the military dictatorship, I was in exile with my whole family and spent a few days in the community of the Ark in Montpellier. Then we decided to return to Latin America because we believed that working together with the people was very important. When I was arrested by the military dictatorship on the 4th of April 1977, Lanza del Vasto was in Buenos Aires. The night before my arrest, he had been in my house. When he knew what had happened, he protested against the military dictatorship, demanding my release. He was the first person to do so. When my mind is like a battlefield And my heart is overcome by fear And hope seems like a ship that's lost at sea My enemies on every side And I'm tempted to run and hide Your gentle whisper reaches out to me In a troubled and violent world in which we live today, 
It is a great challenge to change the spiral of violence that involves the lives of millions of people worldwide. By remembering Mahatma Gandhi, we must remember his struggle and we must intensify our efforts and think of specific options and opportunities to build a more just and humane society. Many years of resistance and struggle through non-violent means have built roads for social participation where human rights and non-violence values are indivisible. The people of Latin America have a long experience of non-violent struggle. Indigenous people, peasants, trade unions and social organizations have developed forms of non-violent resistance. In the 20th century, it is necessary to build spaces of resistance and social, cultural, spiritual and political life. And it is only possible to transform this reality through the generation of a critical conscience and the upholding of values of the gospel of non-violence as a force of liberation. People must find their understanding and sense of life. I think it is necessary to delve into the political dimension of non-violence and the social and structural changes that must be achieved. Gandhi was very clear about the objectives of the struggle for liberation. He converted non-violence into a comprehensive transformation of life, reinforcing the relationship between human beings and Mother Nature. The struggle was ethical, spiritual and political. His goal was the liberation of people, but there is still a long way to go. In the national program of features, you just heard a feature titled Power of Nonviolence. The feature was narrated by Kiran Mishra and Manoj Mayankar. The program was conceived and produced by Minakshi Mund. A presentation of the Central English Features Unit, this broadcast came to you from the Delhi station of All India Radio.